Hi, and welcome to Velo GPS. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to pair Shimano's latest Ultegra DI2 group set with the Garmin Edge 830. Once paired with the 830, you'll be able to include additional DI2 data on screen, as well as the ability to change screens and more using the top buttons on your DI2 shifters. In order to be able to communicate with your Edge 830, you'll need to have the Shimano DI2 wireless unit integrated with your DI2 setup. We've covered this in a separate video which can be viewed via the link at the top of the screen, so if you're unable to pair your DI2 and Garmin, a missing wireless unit may be the reason. OK, so now we've cleared up potential hardware issues, let's get started. So to start off we're going to select the menu option. Having selected that we're then going to select sensors, and then we're going to add sensor, but before we do so we just need to click up and down on the uh, gear shifter uh, just to wake up the DI2, and once we've done that we can select add sensor, and we're just going to scroll down the list looking for the DI2, so we're going to select Shimano DI2, and we can see now that it's detected our DI2, so we're just going to select the little tick box up on the right hand side, let's just select that, and then we're going to add the sensor to pair devices. So it's now asking if we want to add custom data screens to support new sensors. So we think that's a good idea. So we're going to select the tick option uh, down below here. And we're then asked, do we want to set up DI2 buttons? So this is the buttons that are on the top of your DI2 shifters. Uh, so yep, yeah, no, I think we'll select that and we'll just see what we can do. So. From the list here we've got left road shifter, we've got right road shifter, so we're just going to select the left road shifter, and we can see that with a single press of that, at the moment it's set up to go to the previous page, we can also have press and hold and double press, so all of these can be assigned various functions, but we're just going to go for single press for simplicity at the moment. And we can see from the list that we can select next page uh, to go to the next page on your setup, previous page, record lap, start and stop timer, uh, turn the backlight on. We can go directly to uh, our map page, our compass page, our elevation profile. So there's a whole range of functions that we can, we can use there. But we're just going to select, because it's our left-hand shifter, previous page. So this will enable us to scroll to the previous page. So we're going to go back from here. And now we're going to select the right-hand shifter. And again, you can see that you've got single press, press and hold, double press, and for simplicity we will go with single press. So this is our right hand shifter, you've got the same options but we're going to select next page on the right shifter. Again we're happy so we'll just go back here. So we've set up the buttons on the top of our shifters, we're now going to set up our data fields for the DI2 information. So you've got all of the usual options here, um, so we can scroll through and see we've got things like uh, graphical, cadence, heart rate, power, etc. But we're going to select the gears option, and then within the gears data fields you've got a whole range of things. Uh, we've got gear battery here, we're just going to turn it off and select DI2 battery level. Not sure what the difference is, at the moment we've got gear combo, we're going to take off gear rate, Ratio, and then we're going to add in front gear and rear gear, which should give us a graphical display, although gears gives us a graphical display of both gears, it does. So we're happy with that, we're going to select the uh, tick at the bottom of the screen, and we can see here what our uh, data screen for DITs, DI2 is going to look like. And we can change the layout there uh, by using the scroll, so we've got two bigger data fields at the bottom and two smaller ones at the top, but we're going to go back to having four equally sized data fields. OK, so again, uh, we're happy with that, so we're now just going to look at, and uh, a little trick that we'll show you here, um, you are able to swap the data fields over, so by tapping on a data field uh, and then tapping on another one, you can see that the two have swapped there, so again, uh, we'll do that, we'll select it again and we'll tap and they've swapped back. So that's all good. And you'll just notice here it says our gear combo is 53.19. We actually have a 50.34 uh, chainring at the front. Um, so we will show you in a second how to actually change that. Um, that's our 19 tooth uh, rear gear. Uh, we have an 11.28 on the rear. So we're happy enough with that. OK, so this is our sensor page. And we'll just go back and show you how you access that again from the main menu. So you select menu. OK, so we select the menu icon, we choose sensors, and then we can choose our DI2 sensor that we have there. So on this screen we can see that it's enabled, um, you can remove the sensor, but we're going to look at sensor details. 
And again, here we can now see that uh, we have the gears um, at the front and the rear gears. We'll just select the front gears. Um, it's set to automatic at the moment, and you can see that it's on 5334. If you select it, you can manually update it, or if you look at the presets and scroll down, we should find that there's a 5034 tooth uh, chainring option there, so we're happy with that. We'll just uh, turn it back onto uh, automatic, and it, if we go back... Uh, what we can see now is that you've got the option to amend your DI2 button setup. So what we did on initial set setup, if you want to amend that or change it or, or add in for the push and hold, etc., you've got the ability to do so. So on that screen there, you've got a whole host of options. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll just show you within our current activity profile how the screen looks. So this is our normal data screen with a large data field in the middle and lots of small data fields lower down. Uh, if we swipe across, we've got our map page, we've then got the elevation page, and then this is the DI2 page that we set up. So you can see the gear options, uh, most importantly, the battery level at the top. So this is a really important field to have displayed to avoid getting caught short with a, a low battery that runs out. And we can also see that our gear combo is now correctly displaying a 50 tooth front chain ring. And again, at the top, we have a graphical display of the front and rear gears. So we can see the rear gear is in the third cog. So, one of the things you may want to do is have one or two of these fields on your main data screen. And we mentioned that the battery level was a really important piece of information. What we're going to do now is we're just going to scroll back and we're just going to show you now that you can, a neat little trick uh, that we showed in a previous video, if you tap and hold on the screen, so we just tap and hold and it's now highlighted and we let go, it takes you into the data field category. So you can actually update a data screen uh, on the fly just by that tap and hold option. We're gonna scroll down and let's say we just wanted to add battery level in on the, uh, the main screen here, just to something. So again, we've always got that eye on. Whenever we set off with a Garmin, we can see that we've got sufficient battery to last the journey and we're not gonna get stuck in gear on our way round. Okay, having shown you how to pair and set up your Garmin Edge 830 and DI2, we'll give you a quick demo of it in action. So, in a few short minutes, that's how to pair and set up your Garmin Edge 830 and DI2 group set. If you've liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment, as it helps to promote us on the platform and everybody loves a virtual high five. In the meantime, check out some of our highlights from our channel.